Hello there, everyone. It's General. Do you still have your first rod from whenever you first played Minecraft? I do. And I'm going to be showing you that today. <laughs> I created this world whenever I first picked up the game. Well, and it was an illegitimate copy, but I would eventually being a honest paying customers, you know, further down the line. But back then, I got a illegitimate copy from a high school friend of mine. I was I was a junior in high school. I didn't really care. And I got a free game. Sounds like a win to me. I started this back in whenever I first got the game on the 30th of November 2010. That was like right on the cusp of alpha and beta. But for that date in particular, it was like really late alpha. But I didn't really get a lot of playtime until, you know, like beta 1.1, 1.2, as you'll see. So this is my spawn. Just a just like a little beach, a sandy beach. And because this is a beta world and I don't really know who's watching, I'm just going to have to inform you on basically everything. Like, you don't see gravel beaches anymore, do you? <laughs> uh, yeah, they used to be in the game. Not anymore. And the terrain generation was, you know, that good old classic generation, not realistic how it is today. Yeah, there's my spawn. This started off as a like a survival world, but it morphed into something a little different, which we'll get to. So like whenever I first started. Oh, before we get into that. I don't know what's up with converting this world through like so many versions, but there's something going on with the trees here that I can't really explain. But anyway, spawning here on the beach. First thing I did in this world was mine into this hill a little bit, get some cobblestone, mark this off with a pillar, and then, you know, moved, uh, let's see here, L let's say that's north. Another strange thing with this world is invisible chests. Something else I can't really explain. Got my first gravel here, at least I think so. I made my first dock, which uh, it's pretty simple. And see that th this is another bug thing about this world. Like this is actually supposed to be like this. Yeah, that's correct. And speaking of boats, back then, boats, whenever you, well, they didn't have the oars first off. And <laughs> whenever you would like crash a boat into like say this gravel beach it would actually break and drop i believe three planks like three oak planks and two sticks it could be the other way around but boats used to break the control of them was really bad and they weren't as good as they are right now for this world being beta it's so weird seeing like all the new mobs all the new textures very very strange Yeah, I, I, for as long as I've played on this world, at least it felt like it was long, I don't have like an official path going all the way to my base. I just have this little staircase here, and I just kind of knew my way to my base. Which, it wasn't much. Not at all. This is the back door. We're going to go through the front. Yeah, front entrance. Uh, I can't really explain this button. I I'm kind of baffled at its placement because maybe I had an iron door here. I, I don't really know. But the other side doesn't really have anything to open the iron door. If there was an iron door here, I, I really don't know. So yeah, I first set up here and then expanded that way. My first mine. Funnily enough, whenever I made this thing, yes, I dug a staircase all the way down stereotypically, but whenever I mined my first diamonds, I stupidly used a stone pickaxe 
I mined my first ore and then it didn't drop. I'm like, okay, maybe dropping the diamond is, is chance based or something. So I mine it again and then the diamond doesn't drop from the ore. I'm like, why is this happening? So what I do is go on the Minecraft wiki and see that, oh, you need an iron pickaxe to mine diamond ore. I just kind of facepalm at that. Yeah, we got a just a little pool of lava for throwing away junk. How I organized things was very different. And I had to separate the chests like this, but because back then, let me go outside. Back then, you couldn't do this. Nowadays you can, but you couldn't do this before. Whenever lock chests came around, you could put, you know, normal chests here, locked chest here, and then keep on going alternating like that. But even then, that's obsolete. And this is the back door. So after I made my little tunnel, I made my first creation, which is this castle up here. I made this tunnel strictly to get away from the mobs. Yeah, I made a wall here first, and then I started encircling this and made this courtyard. And then I made the tower, which is going to be our first vantage point. So yeah, we got a... We got a little temple here. Another quote-unquote castle. Uh, this is the last build that I have in this world. Well, it was the last thing I was building whenever I quit playing this world. We have the minefield, which... Uh, I gotta tell you, whenever I first got this game, made this castle, and first you started using inventory editors, I immediately made a minefield and just really loved watching all the mobs fall into the, the silly little traps that I made. And, you know, just watch them explode. <laughs> I had a lot of fun with TNT back in the day, and dispensers and arrows, as you'll see. The design of the mines was pretty simple. All you did was dig two blocks down, put TNT down, sand, and an oak pressure plate. It's like when have you stepped on it, you're kind of trapped in here, and then you explode. <laughs> Seems like no matter what, like whenever you first pick up this game, especially if you're a kid, you will always have fun with TNT at, at the start. Just either griefing builds, or in this case for me, I, I loved like making TNT cannons and landmines and stuff. I have a staircase here to a rail going to the opposite end of these hills, which is my testing grounds. Uh, what else do we have here? We have my first church. There's another castle over here that's fully made of netherrack for some reason. We got a treehouse. My nether portal and my first roller coaster is in here somewhere. So if you're an old player, you should know what this is. So back in the day, there was a bug with minecarts where this minecart, like whenever it, it, it would come along next to this cart, this one would push this one, even though it's on like a separate rail and boost it. So like this track is like the boost, like the boost line or the boost rail. And then this is your main rail where you would be in. And then for it to reset, it would loop back onto itself and then you know, go back to where it is. It's <laughs> it was obviously patched out and we got uh, powered rails as a replacement. But let me tell you. Power, well, like booster rails back then were so much more powerful than powered rails today. So this is my nether portal. 
nothing too special going on in here except the the dogs surprisingly have orange collars whenever they're supposed to be red. I guess that's another bug for me converting the world to new versions. And then there's also this. Uh, the portal was flat and orientated wrongly. You can tell from the hitbox that it's... Yeah, it's... Something's weird going on there. Because it made so much noise, I made it a little far from my main tunnel. As for the little treehouse, uh, there's nothing too much going on here. I just kind of had an idea of, oh, let's put some like wooden paths going over and through all these tree leaves. But I didn't really like live here or anything. It was just kind of a creative project of mine. Speaking of creative, this is not a legitimate survival world. I did play survival up to a point, and then I discovered a inventory editor, and then I went crazy with, with, with this world. I cheated in items with it. I got like stacked diamond gear, stacked diamond tools. Uh, I gave myself all the building materials I ever wanted, and then I just went crazy. Although, because I was still playing in survival, I still had some limitations. Like I, I couldn't fly like how I am right now. In fact, this is pretty jarring to be just be flying around in the world like this because I've I've never done that before. On top of using inventory editors, I also used an, a program called MC Edit, which I would close out of this game, open up the program, and load in my world and be able to. Basically, use world, something like World Edit, where I can just select an area, select chunks, teleport to players, move them around, fill and clone areas, make schematics, and stuff like that. The closest that I can think of today that's a more modern version of MC Edit would be Amulet Editor. But there's better things like, say, Lightmatica or World Edit. Yeah, there's a booster track here. So like, like with this roller coaster, if I wanted to, if I was playing like back then, not here in the modern version, I would have to climb up just like this, going up the stairs and such. I'm so mad that Mojang has not fixed the bug where you, well, the, your perspective, like where you're looking does not turn with the minecart. Like that's a bug that should have been fixed a long time ago. Although not doing that does have its advantages. Yeah, there's a booster track here. Yeah, there's no way I'm going to be able to make this. Nah. Bummer. Huh. Yeah, just a simple little roller coaster. I'm using nothing but gravity and, of course, that one booster track that we passed and couldn't really hit because that bug's been patched for years. <laughs> years. Uh, we do stop at a, a little bit of a landmark. So uh, I didn't really understand how water worked in this game. Like, for example, if I say split this in half, use sponges to empty this, and then broke this dam of blocks I just placed. Like, water would, like, fill in here and reclaim what it just lost. Something like that. Like, water to me was confusing back then. Like, something simple like this, I, 
I did not understand how water just didn't pour in into here at all. So I just kind of made this and left it in case I ever wanted to make an underwater base, which I never did. Guess we're going on to my little temple here. There's no interior in here, unfortunately, just crosses. Nothing else. Oh, and I guess like a fountain and water. Yeah, I have a few religious things in this world, but they won't get in the way too much. Below my castle, I have water like going over glass for some reason. The whole idea with like running water over the glass was well for protection, but also to kind of see the world through like a blue lens. It used to look a lot better than this. It was a lot more clear with the beta water. I don't know why it's so, I don't know, chopped up. And if we go a floor above this, this this is what it would look like without the glass, but it doesn't look as good. So this is my second one. Uh, I don't have any like crenellations on this for some reason. I also found it baffling that I can fit something as heavy as like a whole castle on like a floating island like this. And uh, to make this floating, this was connected before. So like what I did was just use TNT to, you know, make it float. I got nothing to say about this. I, I don't know what I was doing, but uh, it must have been, I guess, like a concept for like towers connected to towers and so on to make like a mega fortress. So yeah, we have another booster rail here. And then there's another one here, I believe. I really don't know. There's a rail here. I don't know if... Well, if this was a booster rail and I was coming in, well, if I... Wow. Oh, the damage. Yeah, I, I don't know what the heck happened. Like, this was supposed to be right here. So, if I was starting here going this way, this minecart would be over here. You know and the booster minecart would come along with it. And then whenever I would, you know, come back to the church here, it, it would basically be like a seesaw. He would come over here, come over there and so on. And then I have another booster rail here. So this is my first church. It's very crude looking. Yes. But this is some of my first builds in Minecraft ever. And I didn't have anything else to go off of except the one church I went to whenever I was uh, a good Christian boy. So let's see what the inside is like. There used to be a painting here. I forget which one. Yeah, the interior is very... Sparse. Funnily enough, I did not have an altar, but I did have a golden cross. And room for pews. And windows. If I built this nowadays, I would make these windows like different colors. I would have an altar. But this is beta. I didn't have a lot of block choices. In fact, I didn't have a lot of experience building either. <laughs> Up here in the bell tower, I have a jukebox with 13 in, in it. Strange, I can right click it, but the disc won't eject. That's strange. But I chose 13 because it's the only disc that had bells and chimes in it, at least in the, be in the beginning. In the vicinity, there's some kind of testing grounds with obsidian. It must have been like a forum post or a video I watched back then, but 
there was some kind of myth I believed where you could explode and destroy obsidian with enough TNT. Obviously, you can't. But what I did was I made myself like a cobblestone bunker because you have to keep in mind I was playing in survival. There was no creative mode back then. I cheated in items, yes. I can give myself full diamond armor, but I need I needed a place to protect myself. So I made this cobblestone bunker, exploded the TNT, the obsidian stayed, and well, that myth was busted. As with my first castle, I made another one, kind of with the same philo well, not philosophy, but build style, I guess. You'll find with some of my other castles, and I think I have another one underground over there somewhere, but I only built with one block. I don't know why. I don't know, I was just naive, I guess. So I have this winding path here. Uh, I have this lever here for opening the door. And I have two netherrack towers, and there's some interiors in there, but there's really nothing in there. This must be blocks left over for whenever I was building this thing. So what I thought was a castle back then was... Well, I made a outline for like where the walls would be. I put in crenellations, I added towers, and called it a day. I wanted to make another netherite castle, and with the help of MC Edit, I took this corner and took the other corner and then just filled this in with dirt. I waited until grass grew in and then I started building. And it uh, looks like I never finished. Oh yeah, my first diving board. Whenever I made this, I wanted the water to only flow like one way. But I couldn't get it the way I wanted, so I just kind of left it like this. And I thought, whenever I made this, I actually thought this was pretty high. Like, you might laugh at that. But this was a mountain to me. Oh, same with that over there. That was a mountain to me. And my render distance was so, so low. Hold on, let me show you. This was my render distance back then. I don't know, the fog was scarier and... Like, the fog would cover up a little bit of that castle in the, in the distance. Well, I say the distance, but I can just fly over there. <laughs> Like, in almost an instant. But back then, if I wanted to get over there, I'd have to, you know, take the long way. I don't know. I really miss beta fog, don't you? Like, if you're an old player, don't you miss beta fog? I, I don't like the current fog, and having really high render distances definitely just changes the game. As we'll get to in a little time later. But for now, let's bump up my render distance back to what I had it before. So, a diving board. We also have a little testing area for crosses. I assume this was either for the temple or maybe the church. I, I really don't know. Personally, I still like the gold and the clay. All the others are just kind of unattractive. All right, so we have the dirt castle now. I actually made this hole, and then I made it ruined by using TNT to explode parts off. I wanted this dirt castle to be sort of like a mob arena, where I would place monster spawners. I'd have like all the common mobs, you know, zombies, skeletons, spiders spawn in here. You know, I would fight them for fun, and then I would leave whenever I got bored. We got a bunch of cactus here. We have my first water slide. Because boats broke back then, I had to line this up perfectly, and whenever I did get to the bottom, I had this... I don't know how you put it. Like, whenever you got to the bottom, you had this, like, water flowing the opposite direction to prevent you from going forward too fast and breaking the boat. And how you got up was totally up to you. I didn't have like a path or anything, no ladders, no nothing. 
All right, let's head to my beta 1.2 testing grounds. So I do have this little staircase here. I have the Grail going to the testing grounds. Got a little cave there. Don't know what's going on here. And here we arrive at my first beta 1.2 <clears throat> um, my first beta 1.2 creation. A wall of dispensers and, well, the button's missing. I must have destroyed it. But, uh, a pressure plate and a wall of dispensers shooting arrows at me. <laughs> for me, this was peak entertainment for me. <laughs> uh, I was... It was such a simple pleasure, just... Uh, actually, now that I think about it, let me show you a video real quick. It was definitely a lever that I flipped. A lever, a wall of dispensers, and arrows just flying towards you. Uh, just the simple pleasures of life in early beta. I miss it. And something I noticed whenever I first looked at this was... Well, whenever I activated this, I'm sure you'll notice that this row and this row are the only ones that fire. I guess back then, this dust would have actually powered this block and then turned this torch off. But if we take a look at the bottom row of dispensers, the dust actually runs into the block and then powers this off. So how redstone dust behaved back then must have been different. I even have a little torch clock here, and speaking of torch clocks, nobody builds these anymore. Like, what would be the point? But I have a repeating dispenser here. The rate of fire is pretty low. Oh boy, if you were an old player watching, you should know what this is. For anyone that doesn't know, you used to be able to climb this. Not sure what update it was, but I made a row of note blocks here that just go up, 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 up. I would have actually taken that a lot slower because Back then, we didn't have sprint. We walked at this pace all the time. In fact, back then, everything was slower. So remember how I mentioned about the ladders? Back then, you would have been able to jump and then get on this ladder, but now, you can't. You would need a block right here to be able to make this jump. So, be nice if I was able to sprint. Yeah, there we go. This you can definitely make. This is just like a little gatehouse that I was experimenting with. I mean, I remember making this gatehouse because I wanted to make a base using nothing but cobblestone. And I was really obsessed with testing the blast resistance of like cobblestone and like if a creeper exploded like right here, I wanted to test to see how many explosions this wall can take before it can be breached. I found out it was three. We have another funky looking portal here. We have an obsidian bunker here. <laughs> Don't know why it's facing this way though. Because there's explosions like all over the place. Before we move on that way, I have a pillar here, and then a, another pillar here, which marks where I made a glowstone castle. It lights up itself. But it's just so cursed, and... <laughs> if you have any thought that I have not made this a legit survival world, like, let me prove to you that this <laughs> could not have been done in survival by me. Like, I would have been too lazy. I would have not gotten all this glowstone just to make this silly little thing. 
Man, what do I have in here? Yeah, glowstone. I still have some materials left over. If I go into Spectator real quick, you can definitely see that I used TNT to make this. I think I used MC Edit, or maybe just did it by hand, made it flat, and then made a castle underground, which makes no sense. But I was just having fun back then, just, you know, building, experimenting with the game. Stuff like that. Oh, actually, before we, before we move on to, like, over there, I did, like, some kind of experiment trying to figure out, well... I quickly figured out the world height while making this thing, but I wanted to test to see how far a dispenser can shoot. And, man, just looking at this old spreadstone just makes me, like, cringe a little bit, because all I was capable of doing for extending a redstone signal that I knew of was inverting it over and over again. It's like this lever only re reaches like 15 blocks and then I have an inverter here and that inverts again, invert, invert, and so on. So let's fire this thing. Oh. Yep, there it comes. <laughs> yeah, it fires this far, but I have a sign over here that says otherwise. I really wonder if beta dispensers really shot this far. Past me thought it would be a really good idea to make a giant crater, and in order to do that, I loaded up MC Edit, I chose an area, I picked one quarter, picked another, went all the way down to Bedrock, and filled it <laughs> with TNT. Boy, was I stupid. And I lit that thing, and I couldn't come to this area ever while I had that computer. And whenever I would ever want to come over here, the TNT would load in, my game would crash, and I would have to go back into MC Edit and then move my player character away from this area just so I could still play in this world. I also uh, went to MC Edit and any existing TNT that didn't explode yet, uh, I changed it back to like dirt and grass, but there was still some TNT still exploding and you kind of have this. <laughs> yeah, even to this day, there was still TNT going off. And I, my computer back then simply could not load it in. And while I was looking down here, there's a triple spawner here with all three mobs. How lucky. So this is my first TNT cannon ever. It's a tiny little thing. I didn't need TNT cans to be that powerful because TNT was really, really powerful back then. But like now, this isn't going to go far. This is probably going to go like right here, maybe right here, right here. But back in beta, this would have shot at least to here or further. Of course, I got to do this manually. Yeah, how pathetic is that? But that's okay, because I got a bigger model that uses three TNT. Much better. Much better. <laughs> yeah, that's how far it's supposed to be shooting. Just got the timing wrong. I also have this obsidian model here. There must have been many times where I didn't get the timing right. 
my TNT cannons exploded. And I got fed up with it, so I started making it out of obsidian. This is also the first and last time I have ever used a furnace minecart. What did it do? All it did was it did a circuit all around this area. That's all it did. I guess I really wanted to see like how long a, a furnace minecart could go before it stopped. I guess I also have this minecart here to like push me along for the journey. But I'm telling you right now, I'm sure you've seen it in videos and stuff. I'm going to tell you as a someone that joined this game over like 13 years ago, just remove this from the game. There's no point in this. All right, so you've seen the wall of dispensers. Here's the bigger brother. <laughs> so I went bigger and better with this. And I made another video during beta 1.2, standing exactly here, cowering behind this lever. And funnily enough, funnily enough, arrows would be blocked by the hitbox of the lever for some reason. So I had this position here, but I also had this position here for, well, just a different perspective. But... Because this is old redstone, I need to flip the levers in a really particular way. All right, it should be ready to fire. Huh, looks, looks like we need to load this up again. All right, we are fully loaded and ready to fire. That is a whole lot of arrows. You would not want to be standing in front of that. <laughs> Alright, let's try that again, but from a different perspective. Oh my gosh, that is horrifying. <laughs> Over here, I was testing whether fire arrows created by a dispenser shooting arrow through lava and at TNT would ignite TNT. Judging by the crater, yes, it does. <laughs> yes, it does. This is probably my first instance of a forest fire that I tried to put out with buckets of water with haste. So back in beta, I don't know when it was removed, but fire used to spread infinitely. You lit this tree on fire, it kept spreading, and spreading, and spreading, until there was nothing else left to burn. So, can you imagine for a moment if that was still in the game, and lightning struck a tree in a jungle, per se, and just burned it all to the ground? Or, if you're unlucky enough, lightning strikes... Or perhaps a graver comes by and lights your wooden house on fire. It's just going to be gone in seconds. Here on the final stretch here, we have a stone path going to a lava waterfall. And all it does is take us to the rail that leads to my testing grounds. Okay, next we have this thing the tallest structure I have in this world. And you gotta think, the world height back then was, well, the limit was 127. And this is the highest that you can get back in the day. So like what I did was, I made a rail that went from the top of the world to the bottom, all the way to the bottom. And then I have a ladder going up to the surface. I theorized that maybe I wanted to see what the top speed of a minecart would be. So I made this. All right, to conclude our little tour, we're here in the very red nether because I have night vision on. Something that I remember whenever I first entered the nether was I really hated gas destroying my staircase going up to 
this other part of the, the nether. So my first solution, at least when I was still playing this in survival, was to make a, a gravel staircase. So whenever a gas fireball would hit this, the stairs would be, I guess you could say, like, diminished a little bit, but I could repair it easily. And gravel was really cheap, especially since we had gravel beaches back in the day. But I switched to obsidian and I never looked back. The rest of my nether is pretty boring, I would say. I have portals here and there. And funnily enough, something I believed back then was nether portals generated naturally. I don't know why I remember this or why I thought that nether portals generated naturally. And upon looking into like nether portals on the Minecraft wiki, which I used to commute to so, so much, I figured out that you could actually press a hotkey back then to generate a nether portal near you. And I, I guess that's why I thought that nether portals used to generate naturally. And hey, funnily enough, 1.16 actually brought that about. I feel like I predicted the future there. Yeah, Notch was cranking out so many updates back then. I commuted to the Minecraft wiki so, so much. Yeah, he definitely made an amazing game. And I'm, funnily enough, I'm still playing it to this day. And it all started here on this world 13 years ago. Well, that's all. I thank you all for watching, and I hope you enjoyed my tour through my first world. I started all the way back in very late alpha and played a little bit in early beta. I'll see you around.